Hello, Miss Veronica with the cutest haircut in the world. Hello, hello. How are you? I'm doing great. And hi, Eric. I love you very much. He's doing this. Hi, Mama. Oh. We like doing the cha-cha today. Oh, that's so sweet. All right. We are going to see if you can get, maybe he's already here, uh, Mikhail Gorbachev to interview. Eric? M Mikhail? Mikhail? Mikhail, Mikhail, so I just say Gorbachev. Gorbachev, yeah, Gorby. We did spend some time with him early this morning in my meditation, so he's not far from here. Um, and actually, when he comes in, he's a you would think he would come in as a very large, booming presence. Yeah. He's very um, demure and very, um, just very proper energy that comes in. So okay. we do have him here. Is he there? Yep. When you're ready. All right. Are you ready for questions? Thank you so much, Gorbachev, Mr. Gorbachev, for coming in. It's and, my honor uh, these, and my pleasure. Oh, uh, these are questions for the community. The, the first one is, I knew it would come up. What is the origin of the very vivid birthmark on your head? I know medically it could be linked to damaged blood vessels at birth, whatever, but what is the spiritual a reason for being born with it was it linked to a past life situation etc mm -hmm. he says that you need to understand that that birthmark is significant in the sense that that's the way he died in a past life he was bludgeoned to death mm. and furthermore he's saying tell them why i was bludgeoned to death because he was somebody that didn't know when to say when he stood up for something that most people would not have partaken in yeah. almost like it was a spiritual religious belief um yeah, he said, I, I took, I really took a blow to the head and he, it was almost like he was not to be graphic, but bludgeoned, bashed. Oh, um, was, were you a politician or a religious leader or what? Um, I was a, I was a figure in a movement to try to separate the churches. Oh, okay. And he says, he says, furthermore, I always believed in autonomy I know that seems contrary, but as we go through this interview, I always believed in autonomy and the voice of choice. Now, he's very clear to say, I know, I know it's conflictual, but let's finish the interview, he says. Okay. Um, what do you, can you pick up what country this was in? This was in um, Europe. He's telling me and he's showing me, I see a lot of Ireland. Ireland. Okay. Yep. All right. Um, were you a spiritual man during your lifetime as Gorbachev? Uh, I'm sorry, say that again. I'm sorry. I kind of mumbled it. Were you a spiritual man during your lifetime as Gorbachev? Yes. He, he's very quick to answer. Yes. Spiritual in the sense that I always knew there was something bigger. I knew that there were things going on that were beyond human explanation. Okay. He's also saying, this is a side item, and he's kind of smirking when he says this. And he says, and don't get me started on aliens. Oh, well, maybe we will. <laughs> you don't want, okay, well, well, we'll save that for see if we have time. Do you have a sense, uh, did you always have this sense in your youth that you would become president of the USSR? I had very driven, very focused ambitions. I knew that I was born to be a leader. I didn't know to the extent that I would be a leader. I knew that I was going to be used publicly as a mouthpiece. Okay. And in doing so, I knew that I had to know myself the best that I could. So self-development, self-awareness was really big for me. Yeah. Okay. Were you, what was your transition like? Were you surprised? Can you kind of describe the experience? He says, unlike humans would think, it was pretty uneventful in the sense that there were no grand trumpets. There really wasn't even a bright shining light. There was lights, he says, yeah. almost like twinkling lights of stars. And it was just 
minus the white tunnel that you all think is there he says the stars the twinkles had a power of calling me towards them Ooh. and i just automatically knew where to go oh nice did you meet your wife when you transitioned i did and also my father oh what about president reagan um not initially, he says, but there was a camaraderie there that goes back lifetimes, he says. Oh, interesting. Okay. Now, losing your wife seemed to be so devastating for you, of course. How did you manage that and being a guide and while being a guide and inspiration for others? And what advice do you have for those who have lost their spouses to stay strong and still make a difference? That's a great question. Yeah, he says that I don't necessarily recommend this, he said, but this is how I coped in the beginning. I compartmentalized. Yeah, I had a place and he's doing I had a place over here for this. I had a place for this and a place for this and a place for this. And I did not let all of the emotions converge on each other. I knew when it was time to to mourn my wife. I knew when it was time to put on my dignitary, my my hat of leadership. I, I understood that it was conditioning. And this, he says, is hindsight. Had I known what I know now, I would have taken more time to immerse myself in the emotions and the feelings of losing and missing my wife. Yes. Okay. Now from, now, from your perspective, what was the spiritual reason why the USSR had to exist and then collapse? What were the people to learn spiritually uh, mm -hmm. under those circumstances? This is the ultimate, the epitome of duality. This was the most incredible experience in seeing both sides and finding the balance. As humans, he says, you can only look at things as good or bad. This is not the way that the big picture really is. If you are to value and really absorb the love and the lessons of freedom, what a better way than to teach you captivity or to teach you lack of freedom. He says this was a gift. This was okay. a gift. And he said it's no surprise that I ushered in and exited out the process. Okay. I was destined for that. <clears throat> Interesting. Could you have prevented the Soviet Union from falling apart or did you want uh, hope it would do so to shift the society away from communism and Marxism? <clears throat> I can't really take credit for one way or the other. What I did was be true to the changes that were emerging in me as a human, as a spiritual okay. human being. Okay. And so I used my heart. Now he says, this is gonna, he, he's kind of looking and Eric's kind of standing by. He says, this sounds very different than you might understand, but believe it or not, I always led from my heart. Oh, now good. what's in a man's heart, he says, is very evident by the actions that they take. So you can see my heart early on. And then my later actions in life, you could see how my heart changed. This is a belief system. This is the way I was raised under a regime of, you know, strict Stalin and just do this and do that. It was conditioned. It's what I knew. And I really did believe I loved it. Oh, interesting. What would you have done differently if you had had the chance? I can't say I would have done anything differently, he says, okay. because all things were meant to be. I had an evolution. I had um, an evolution, a, a revolution inside of me. He says, this takes time. Of course. I was born with a certain amount of energy for a certain amount of experiences. The choices that I made were based on what was inside of me again and what was sent out, what was influenced from outside of me. I can't say I would have done anything differently. Okay. How did the Chernobyl disaster contribute to the dissolution of the Soviet Union? It was, it signified, it signified, it signified a cleansing. As horrible okay. as that sounds, okay. mm. by a cleansing 
a, a global and international cleansing. Um, and he says that with with respect and with his head hung and understanding the ramifications to the humanity. Um, again, it was it was human choice that created what happened, but in a spiritual big sense, it signified cleansing. Mm. <clears throat> Did Russia have anything to do with the JFK assassination? Well, he says that's a tough question because at that time we had our hand in everything. Yeah. And he's being quite frank with this. There were times when the left hand didn't know what the right hand was doing. Mm. That's not to say that there wasn't a sense of understanding. It might have been covert understanding. I'm not trying to dance around this question, he says. Um, and so this, the short answer that you're all looking for is yes. Oh, wow. Do you feel like the Green New Deal is the same or opposite to the Soviet Union outlined? And what are your thoughts on the subject? I'm not sure I understand that, but what do you think about the Green New Deal? I think it's a rebirth of something that tried to happen. I think the time wasn't ready exactly for what we were doing. And with significant modification, modifications, he says, you can't take the old and make it new in the world we live in. You have to modify it. So it's oh. similar with changes. Okay. I don't know what that is, but that's... Some people think that uh, the Russia now supports Green New Deal activists all throughout Europe to get them to... to, um, to try to go for, to tr close down their coal uh, plants and all that kind of stuff. So they end up relying only on Russian energy. Well, see, he says, I, I don't want to speak for him, but oh, yeah. so he says, go ahead. He says, interpret it the way that I think he said it. Okay. Um, there it's, it's revisiting the same, which would be the, the, the old Russia, the paradigm of control of, you know, that kind of thing, but it needs to be different. So Okay, here he is. He says, so what the difference is, let's make it have different meaning. Let's take away the the subversive, undercover, covert mission, and let's just make a healthier planet. Okay. Now, did, did, does he still have his birthmark? Yes. Veronica? Okay. Yes. <clears throat> How much influence did the U.S. and the Freemasons have on the world leadership at that time? Were you, uh, were you swayed or dismayed by them? Oh, this is sweet. He says, I was humbled by them. Oh, oh. I was humbled by them. I knew that they had something that I didn't. Now he's talking as a person in a personal persuas persuasion, not as a leader. Okay. He wanted to emulate the goodness and the kindness. Okay. Now, I'm not, I'm, I have to look this up So first, so let me skip to the next. I don't know what O-T-A-N stands for. Oh. Um, so we're going to ask about that. But uh, there have always been difficult relation, relations between the Baltic states and Russia. Baltics were the first one who started demanding independence from the USSR. Do you support their independence? I do. I now, quite frankly, he says, and he's got his hands like this. He's standing here like this, like if you can see his arms are crossed. And he says, quite frankly, I say release us all from the chains that bear us, that tie us and keep us from bearing the fruits of why we're here. Okay. All right. No, okay. OTAN is just another way of saying um, NATO, but in French. So did you um, uh, imagine NATO boundaries expanding so much, even though an agreement was signed to stop NATO from expanding before the USSR collapsed? What was the first part? Did he what? <clears throat> uh, did you even imagine that NATO boundaries would expand so much, even though there was an agreement in place to stop NATO from expanding before the USSR collapsed? He says, I knew it was pervasive. I knew that it could not really be stopped in a way that would be healthy for the world. I knew that intellectually. Oh. 
but I wasn't going to give up hope. This is a very, this is me giving you, I know I probably shouldn't, but he's a very complex dynamic individual. Like yeah. there's a lot of, you know, he's very demure with his energy, but boy, is he powerful in his beliefs and his stance. Mm. Wow. Yeah. All right. I bet. Did you feel betrayed by that? This agreement not being honored for the experience? I did. I did. Yeah. He said, I did. I thought I had the way. I thought mm -hmm. I understood things from a perspective that was the way. Okay. Why are so many Russians moving to Serbia? My mom lives there and says it's full of Russian. Lovely people, she says. Uh, uh, one Russian is buying her flat, actually. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> um, he says, why not? Now, the bigger picture is people are scared. He says, people are scared. People don't understand what's going on. And he says, quite frankly, I don't understand what's going on. Yeah. He says, I don't get the meaning of it. But he said, people are running in droves and they're doing it secretly because they're scared. Okay. Um, and also, um, he, are we going to talk about what's happening right now? Or can he speak about yeah. it now? Or are you going to wait till the questions come up? Oh, uh, well. Let's wait. Yeah. Uh, okay. So somebody wants to ask from your perspective, Mr. Gorbachev, what is the quickest way to a lasting and just peace in Ukraine? Um, and maybe just give you a, give us a, yeah. your opinion on the timeline. Um, he says that the problem is it's me, 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 me. Listen to me. Listen to me. Nobody's really listening and nobody's really seeing the picture, the big picture. And also he talks about, um, Putin in a way that um, he's painting a picture of him where he is mentally ill. Oh, yeah. Where he is. Um, we don't mean this literally, he says, but he's Hitler reincarnated. Now, that's a phrase. It's not a literal. No, uh, right, right. But he says, this is what you're looking at. And he said, it's it, it it's almost like deja vu. And there's no stopping this man. Um, except when he's on the other side. Oh, gosh. Um, do you have any idea? Of course, free will is involved, obviously, but of when this thing will end and how it will end? Um, he's very uh, solemn when he says it'll end with the demise of Putin. It will only end with the demise of Putin. Putin will go down swinging. Um, There is a, a very strong structure in place to remove Putin. Oh. It's underground, it's covert, oh. it's not meant to be known by only the few that will partake. Okay. Um, yeah, he said, and the reach is far and wide, meaning it's not just Ukrainians looking at this, it's a, it's a global initiative. Wow. Okay, interesting. Uh, do you think he will ultimately end up using one of the one or more of his nuclear weapons? It's very possible. It's very possible because I keep he I keep hearing him say genocide, genocide, genocide. Oh. So uh, it's very possible. He says, but not to the impact that would make him satisfied. It's a, it's a race of the clock right now, he says, because as things are turning in this evil, and he calls them this evil little being's head, yeah. the structure that's in place is moving closer and closer and closer. And the other thing he's showing me is the more that this man goes off center, off the rails, so to speak, mm -hmm. the easier the, the organized structure can get in, can infiltrate. Okay. So the yeah. crazier he begins to look, yeah, the closer we are. Okay. I think you should be ready right now. This is a question. It's kind of the same as I already asked, but specifically, will the EU slash NATO members actually be nuked? No. Okay. Now, you know, you were very close to your Russian people. What do they think about the, as a collective, what do Russians inside Russia think about what's going on? He's got tears coming mm -hmm. down his eyes. 
and I can feel, I've got chills all over and I feel like I'm going to cry. This really, really bothers him. He's very, he's very hurt by this. His people were everything to him. And he's saying, when you look at them, not as Russians, but as people, yeah, they don't want this. Mm. This is not something they want. And the only way to get away from this is to escape, is to leave. He says, nobody wants this. People are terrified. They're hiding from what's happening by giving a false sense of yay, yay, yay. But nobody wants this. Oh. Do they believe what Putin has to say about why he invaded? If, if given a percentage, I, I look down at my people, and he still calls them my people, and I will tell you that 95% of the people do not believe this. Mm. The other 10% are probably the elderly out in the rural that just don't have access to tech. Right. All right. Uh, okay, this is kind of the same. Can you give an approximate time uh, frame of when he will re be removed from power by killed? <clears throat> Again, this Within is a, a year, very, two years. It's a very months? difficult question to answer yeah. because it all depends he, he's on the fringe with his mental state he's saying and and it's like this they're <clears throat> creeping, they're creeping um timelines are very difficult to to give given the free will he says i would say you're probably looking at and this is a big frame um 15 to 24 months okay uh What's the real reason that Putin wants Eastern Ukraine? Is it because there is ancient alien arc technology buried there and he will stop at nothing to get at it or another reason? That would at least make sense. But what he's going after is nothing but gluttonous power. Okay. Manipulation, control. Yeah. He thinks the more power he has, the more stature he has, the more gifts he has. People are, there's a few people that are surrounding him and giving him gifts that 10% maybe or 5%, whatever it is, um, that are that are giving him accolades that are enough to fill him. Oh, yeah. He, he, the adulation just pushes him forward. Oh. Without adulation, without praise, without people feeding him, he's nothing. Oh, God. So we sort of talked about this, but I'll... Uh, say this read this question out anyway what do you think of putin as a politician and as a man do you agree with his views about ukraine oh, i know the answer to that last one yeah um no um as a man i find him to be a coward oh as a human being i find him to be a coward yeah as a politician i think he's overstepped in so many ways and he's way out of his element it's a shame he says because the man was an intelligent man yeah He's lost it. Ugh. Power has gone to his head. He's lost it. Well, that's, that's a shame. Do you think Putin has good intentions for Russia in his heart? He he looks at me and he's doing this and he's got this going on. And he said, well, let's bring it down to this. Even Hitler thought he had good intentions. Ugh. If you don't believe what you're doing, you wouldn't be doing it. Okay. That's true. Yeah. Who does Putin answer to? Does he have galactic connections? He does not. He does okay. not have galactic connections. Um, Putin is a lone wolf. He is a warrior. Um, this is interesting because he says, I want, I want to interject something here. Part of my mission on Earth I carried the warrior energy with me also. So he's showing me similarities in the sense that Putin has warrior energy. Uh, Gorbachev had warrior energy. And they can show you the difference in the warriors. You can fight because you're self-centered or you can fight because you believe in a cause that ultimately you lead with your heart. It's the warrior that leads with the heart that is the revered leader. And okay. Putin is not a warrior leading with his heart. Oh. Uh, when will Putin step down? No, we already know. That. Oh, yeah. Isn't there anything in Russia like we have Article 25 or whatever it is, where if you feel like the president has lost his mental faculties, he's forced out of office? 
even there is something similar to that, but it's very difficult to prove. And if you understand the strength and the, the width of Putin, nobody gets near that. Nobody oh. gets to enforce that. They've lost their structure. They've lost whatever structure, internal structure that they are portraying to the world that they have. They have no internal structure anymore. He is the structure. Wow. Um, does he have any physical element? None that we see. Okay. Uh, what do you think the future holds for Russia? Um, ultimately freedom. Ultimately freedom. And, mm -hmm. and, it, and, it, and unfortunately, or fortunately, because it's a human life, but human life must go. And he's talking about Putin. But it, the ult, this, is the, this is the road that's paved to freedom. Yeah. Do you think his successor will be just like him or no. similar? No. He says, we will learn our lessons from this. This... We are changing. We the dynamics of the collective is changing. The, Eric's chiming in, and Eric is saying, if I may, this is like popping the head. It's like you pop the head, and all of the uh, infection comes out. Okay. We are living in a time where Gross. we're popping the head, right? This is okay. Eric, and and all of the infection. He said it's not just Russia; it's everywhere. And he says it's happening on a personal level. People are running into their personal infections inside of themselves. Oh, and with the revelation of that, each person has the ascension happening within them. As a collective, Russia is ascending right now. And ascension is difficult. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what is your biggest regret, if any? You know, <laughs> it's... Um, funny be that that is too funny because right before we came on he Eric and I were sitting here and I had my hands like this and we're talking and and I heard uh, Gorbachev say ironically I don't have any regrets I don't well I mean uh, when you get there you look back <clears throat> you know that any quote-unquote mistakes or failures are are by design spiritually right to I, teach and he's also learn. saying he wants this to be very clear I loved my family as hard and as best as I could. <clears throat> uh, do you have any advice for the Russian government and for the United States government? It's a good one. Both parties are coming at this from ego, from their own perspective. Both parties think they know best. It would be in everyone's best interest, the collective, if everybody just put their ammunition down, yeah. their literal ammunition, their mental ammunition, and just really sat down and had a, a view of the greater and higher good. He's very, he doesn't want to appear not hopeful, but when you have somebody who is as twisted and sick as Putin is, there's no rationale. Where there is hope is the outer lying groups. And that might be what he's referring to as the structure that's going to go oh. in and the demise. Yeah. That has to happen. And that's covert, unfortunately. Well, Hitler had apparently a spiritual contract to do the whole, you know, atrocities he did. Is that the same with Putin? Um, to, to bring, to raise the consciousness yes. of the of the Russian collective, the spiritual, the yeah, the global? spiritual contract is to it, it, it to, is to illustrate duality. Okay, so he could have done that in a less severe way, but he came in as a warrior mm. to get the collective to wake up, which they are, and to really take them in a direction that the, the they will turn the corner. That's the role he's serving. Once we turn the corner, meaning he says that we come from a place of love and we're able to see what's really going on and take the power back. Putin, Putin only gets his strength from the fear that he's invoking. And once people lose the fear and have the courage to stand up, it's like he goes away. It's like the curtain with the Wizard of Oz. You pull it, you'll see a pathetic little man behind it. Mm. Um, what was your spiritual mission as Gorbachev? 
to unite minds, to educate minds, to take a human being on a journey of education. I was all about educating people, okay. understanding that I could only ever educate from the perspective and the beliefs that I held. As mm -hmm. I evolved, I chose to educate in a different way and move in a different direction. Awesome. Do you have any advice for us as citizens and how to navigate the p potential for even more wars? Um, the biggest war that you should fear as a human is the war inside of yourself. Yeah. Because every time you're at conflict with yourself, you vibrate that out into the universe and then you become at conflict with anyone that comes in touch with you. Yeah. The only way to cure this, the only way to move beyond this is to fight the internal fight. Oh, agree. Yeah. Yeah. Get to the head of the beast. Yep. Uh, what can you describe a, another life that influenced your previous one as Gorbachev? Um, he says very early on, um, he was a slave owner. But conversely, he had a life where he was the owner and then he became the slave. So he had created an understanding of both sides. First, he was the slave, then he was the owner. This lifetime where he came in as the controller, if you will, as the captor initially in his regime, um, he began to use the duality of both of those lifetimes to even out where he was going. So had he not experienced slave and slave owner mm -hmm. in different lifetimes, he may not have had the perspective that he had to, to create what he did to ultimately facilitate the demise. Interesting. Oh, you wanted to, uh, did you want to say, first of all, do you want to say anything about aliens? And also you said you had, uh, after the end of the question, you would have some more to thoughts to, uh, to convey. Um, he says that, um, aliens are very real. And he says that no matter what the government tells you, <laughs> Eric, Eric and I are laughing because we're like, we, we know this, you know, yeah. al aliens are very real and he says the government fears, all governments fear revealing this because of the superior intelligence of the aliens for fear of looking dumb. He oh says, my God. When you think of it like this, he says, don't think of the aliens as, you know, with big heads and little bodies. He says, think of them as the most dynamic, structured, intricate energy of information that will ever bypass us here on earth. If yeah. you could tap into just a, a, an eighth of the potential of the alien energy, mm. we would see life completely different. Interesting. Well, is that alien arc technology uh, buried in Ukraine actually? It's not it's buried in the Ukraine. It's not buried in any one place, he says. Yeah, there are oh. parts of it he says when you think about it like that it is it is um like area 51 he says in oh Europe. yeah right it, you can go there and there's a frequency to it he says the same is true for everywhere for some reason he's bringing up switzerland there there is um there, there, everywhere has their pocket of alien frequency yeah yeah okay <clears throat> anything else you want to share I don't have anything else. Um, I would just like to say he's a very wonderful energy. I, I, I always felt probably, so. Yeah. Yeah. He's probably one of my most favorite that I've channeled. He's very uh, uh, respectful. He's very candid. Uh, he's very, you know, just very forthcoming. Um, and he says that he's showing me, he's got his hands out and he's saying that we all need to just hold hands because at the end of the day, we're all made of flesh and blood. Yeah. And when we take the flesh and blood of someone else, we also give of our flesh and blood. Yeah. Ooh, beautiful. Do you have any messages you would like to give to your people? <clears throat> have hope. I know it's hard to have hope when you feel like everything is hopeless. But the reality is you're experiencing this so that you will know the other side of this. Now, for some people, the other side of this will mean going home. 
Okay. That's, that's a possibility. You know, people lose yeah. lives. That's mm -hmm. what happens. But for those of you that remain and choose to stay on earth and have it in your contract to stay on earth, you will be part of the rebuild and you will see a brand new world, literally, that you're going yeah. to live in. And he sends love, so much love to the Ukraine. Mm -hmm. So much love to the Ukraine. Oh, that's nice. All right. Well, thank you very much. Thank you, Eric. Thank you. Veronica at veronicadrake.com. You guys check her out. She's got some exciting new things she's developing and learning Always. that we will share later. <laughs> and we love your haircut. All right. Thank you guys you. be sure to share, uh, especially to your Russian friends and family and uh, hit the notification bell and subscribe. Love you all. Love you, Eric. Love you, Bye. Miss V.